This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. All right, calling the meeting to order. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I was just saying this is going to be a really short meeting, just a quick check-in. Um, and uh, then we can possibly schedule our next meeting for more than a month away. So, uh, you know, as Virginia used to do it, it was, she sort of would meet as needed. I think it's good to have regular meetings scheduled, but I don't think it necessarily needs to be every month. So. And the um, same as we did, didn't meet every, uh, every month out there in the summertime. Yeah, exactly. The summer is a pretty uh, relaxed time. Yeah. So um, first of all, let's look at the minutes. So I'm going to share my screen so we can have them in front of us. One second. Uh, Mark Cassis and I already looked these over and made our edits, but if there's any others, just give it a second. It's loading. There we go. And let me know if Just a point of clarification on the um, scenic byways. Um, the bylaw is actually that trees and walls can be taken down, but only with permission from the planning board. We're working through that in a um, land use group that I've put together. Which Where one? Randall, which one are you talking about? So it's under historical commission and oh, it may yeah. not require. Um, Oh, it, it's just a clarification for the commission. So do you want me to change anything? Um, I, I'm okay with it um, as it is, but it, I mean, if anybody else wants to edit it, that's, that's fine too. What was the clarification, Randall? Can you say it again? So it states there that trees and walls cannot be taken down on scenic ways. They mm -hmm. actually can, but it has to be with, through approval from the planning board. Oh, okay. So it can't without approval. Um, yeah, I think it's worth just adding the words without approval at the end of that sentence or without planning board approval. That we add at the where it says scenic ways, uh, parentheses, um, uh, except w when approved by the planning board. There we That's go. Cool. You get that, Janet? Yes, I do. Thank you. And you want that to go after the word scenic ways? Yeah. Yes. Okay, got it. I move to accept the minutes with that edit. You have a second? second. All in favor? Uh, do we have to do roll? Aye. Aye. Do we do roll aye. call or uh, just? Yeah. Simmons, aye. So last name and your vote. Simmons, aye. Darn old aye. Champ eye. Rosa Brown eye. Haley abstain because I wasn't there. All right. Great. We got it. And who's who seconded? I did. Bob. Who is I? Bob. Bob was I. Oh, Bob Coast. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thanks. All. All right. Stop screen sharing. Um, and so Next on the agenda is just our committee liaison share up. So I'd just like to give an opportunity for each of us to go around and say what's going on in our committees. Um, I will go first. So in the housing side of things, um, we've been working with the planning board to, um, and well, the planning board and the select board, really, mostly Stephen Johnson and Dan LaValle, who are on both. So <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been working with them and the um, Wayfinders uh, to talk about possibilities for that property at 117 to 125 College Highway. Um, and so we met with Keith from Wayfinders uh, like last week or the week before, we walked over the, through the property 
and um, they're going to come back to us with the potential proposal for like what could be done on the property. We already have some ideas about like where on the property these things could happen and having an affordable housing development does not pre preclude us from doing any of the other things we want to do with that property, like uh, whether it's a senior center, public safety complex, uh, fields, uh, some preservation, uh, what is it, conservation areas. It's a big enough property that we can do all of these things. So um, we just wanted to talk to the people who are sort of in the know and who know what it takes to develop an affordable housing complex. And that's really Wayfinders. They're sort of the experts in this region. They lead the Western Mass Housing Coalition. And um, so we had a really fruitful talk with them. We talked about all the things that need to come into play. There's like sewer and there's 40 yard districts and all these other things, but it's just a, taking the chance to um, think about what could fit on that property and which acres. We know that there's still the vote that needs to come up and we're hoping that it's gonna pass um, so that the property can be purchased. But that's just an update. We're sort of in conversations about the possibilities for that property. Any questions or additions to that particular topic or anything else about that property? Um, I just want, were they gonna come up with some concept, uh, rough uh, sketch plans for the property? Specifically the housing people or just in general? Um, both, I guess. Well, we were going based off, uh, so Stephen put together a very rough sort of like blocking out of what could go where to fit all the things. So he has this little sketch he did um, that we showed, we showed to Wayfinders. And they were going to think about like how many units can we fit in that space? So they were talking about having maybe like a five or six acre area dedicated to housing. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to come back to, to us with. It's not going to be something fully flesh and fully formed, but more like, like, here's the possibilities of what could go here. Is this, this isn't um, a paid service. They're just coming back with some conceptual things. Yeah. Okay. yeah we still just... have, we're still waiting on the vote to um, see if we're actually purchasing it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that everything takes so long. You might as well do it yeah. all simultaneously. Yeah, get things started. Any money, uh, then that's money well spent. <laughs> Wayfinders is amazing. I can't sing their praises enough. Like I love my job and my boss, but I've been saying if I had to work anywhere else for anyone else, it would be for Keith Ferry at Wayfinders. Not only is he like so knowledgeable, they come like this executive director comes out and spends like hours with us in rural Southampton when he is based in Springfield and has plenty of things to take care of in Springfield, spends hours with us for free, brings his like real estate expert, uh, director of operations. He's done this multiple times and spent time with us just to sort of help build like the possibilities for rural housing. They're doing all this advocacy on the state level for the um, housing bond bill. So huge shout out to Wayfinders there. It's freaking amazing. Um. So that's sort of the biggest news. Oh, and then the other thing on housing is the 354 College Highway property. We've got it resurveyed. Um, we're in the process of getting the wetland survey done. Um, so I've been working with Scott to make that happen. So making some real progress on these things. What was the second property? What was the address on College Highway? The 354 College Highway. That's the one that we bought with CPA funds. Um, okay. Yeah, it's just like a one unit place, not as nearly as big as a prospect, but it's also actually feasible to do because we don't need an entire uh, sewer extension to make it happen. So, yes. Um, Report for Historic Commission. Um, we've had a couple of meetings. Uh, another, we have a new member uh, on the Historic Commission, and that's uh, Todd Corey. Um, uh, we're happy to have him. We got some young blood, finally. Um, I'm cur currently working on... Um, composing a letter um, uh, in, in effect saying that the Historic Commission is in favor of seeking funds to um, uh, put into, uh, I can't say upgrading, but but um, to save the old town hall in the sense that there's um, brickwork and um, um, mortar needed. Uh, so, um, I'm writing a um, a letter uh, saying what the historical significance of that building is. It is the only town-owned um, building that's that sits in a historic district. Um, 
So it has uh, great significance in that it is, it is town owned. So um, that will be done by tomorrow and hopefully um, uh, we will apply and be successful in getting money to do that. Um, the other thing we're doing is um, we're looking into um, the cost of uh, what it would what would be required to fund um, so, uh, small signs for the scenic roads, uh, but that's off in the future. We're just looking at pricing for now, and that's sign about for, it. A sign for what? Pardon? A sign for what? The scenic byways. Yeah. Signs, signs to designate the scenic, uh, scenic roads, the scenic roads in town. Oh, great! Which I believe, okay. Randy, I think are seven. Um, so you're thinking of uh, requesting CPA funds for the um, old town hall? Uh, no, no, it's uh, it would be uh, it would be a grant. Um, the Math Historic Preservation Projects Fund. Yeah. That's a tough grant. <laughs> yeah. It may, it may ultimately, ultimately uh, uh, come down to requesting CPA funds, but we'll see what happens with uh, with applying for this grant. And, they usually and, requ require matching funds, don't they, when the state? Sometimes, yeah. Well, yeah. if you need to request matching funds, we're yeah. here. Yep. Uh, that's exciting. Um, part of my ignorance, which building is the old town hall? <laughs> It's the where the where the police station is um, currently. Oh, okay, interesting. I heard it referenced so many times, and I've never known what it was. Never so. been in there. In interesting building. Things went on there. Um, you know, at one time in the attic of that building, they used to the kids used to play basketball. They used to have Boy Scout oh. meetings up in that attic. There's a stage. Oh. There's a stage up there. Um, right. Who knows what else went on in that building? But it's uh, <laughs> it's historic. Cool. Yeah, I only went there once when um, the uh, car wash stole my license plate and I had to retrieve it from the oh, police yeah. station. Oh, yeah. It's happened to the best of us. Um, all right, who would like to share next? Can I just jump in, Bob? If you're looking for a sign vendor, I have um, very good ones. If you have a conception, if the Historical Commission has any kind of conceptual drawings of what they'd like to produce. Not um, yet. Not yet. Mass core will actually put together something with their art department and their oh, pricing is pretty hard to beat because they're uh state funded. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Hit me up when you've got something. I can, I can, uh, what we're, 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 to go out for these pricing. What we were saying, what we were thinking is um, the sign would be at each end and it would say designated historic byway. So it would be one line designated historic byway. Um, I'm sorry, uh, designated scenic byway, not historic byway. Designated scenic byway. Any kind of logo or anything to kind no, of no, not yet, not yet. Okay, all right. The note that says, "Don't cut that tree." Yeah. All right. Um, well, I, I can go ahead. I can go ahead for ConCon. Con. Um, yeah, I think um, Mountain Waters is, you know, it's going the right direction. And um, Bridget, Li is it likely or lively <laughs> from likely. Gestro? Is it lively? Likely. Likely. With a K. likely. I'm sorry. Uh, Bridget likely um, attended our last two meetings and um, the last meeting we all voted to um, make sure that the CR, the last CR is signed um, as part of the CONCOM, um, you know, our, our end with um, holding the CR. Well, I guess it's Kestrel holding the CR, but um, yeah, we sort of voted to approve that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much Mountain Waters is is up is you know going the right direction. Um, and then there is a new trailblazer group um, that the Concom has been kind of working. They're just a volunteer, not just, but they are a volunteer group that we're really excited about. 
um, with, you know, open space in our town and um, just trying to, um, you know, uh, point them in the right direction because they're enthusiastic with uh, our town properties. So that's pretty much it from ConCom. That's awesome. Who else is on ConCom these days? It's, um, right now it's Brittany Taylor, Jake okay. Leon. It's um, Dan LaValle, sort of, I think he's sort of temporary. And then we do have a new person named Hazel. Um, yeah. Great. Glad y'all are repopulated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're looking for more, I think, one or two vacancies still. And then George is doing a great job um, being our agent. Awesome. Who else we got to share today? I don't have too much from parks um, other than the highway department is struggling to keep up with the grass growing. Um, uh, there's some stuff on the further horizon. Uh, we're looking at a stormwater treatment system. Um, it's called a demonstration project that will likely go in Conant Park near uh, Clark Street. Um, and it will pre-clean stormwater before it gets discharged into the manhand. So it's kind of an exciting project um, to increase groundwater quality. Um, it's, a, it's a little ways off. That's awesome. Mark, what do you got for us? Not too much. I guess uh, yeah, plenty of work has been fairly quiet. Um, um, last couple of meetings have been canceled and um, you know, we're waiting to revise the uh, 40R process and uh, get that oh, yeah. along. Very exciting. Um, and Dana, anything going on in open space? No, I was just trying to think. We really haven't done anything that affects uh, community preservation nor the Greenway, so I really have nothing to say. Great. Well, I appreciate everyone sharing. I like, I really like how this group has so many people from different committees. I sort of we can use it as a way to sort of just keep up with what's going on everywhere. So even if it's not yeah. like 100% relevant to CPC, it's just nice to have a sense of everything that's going on. So I appreciate you taking the time to do all that. Um, so um, I would like to suggest that we schedule our next meeting for like, I don't know, August, September, maybe. What do you guys think? Give ourselves a little break. And if something comes up in the meantime, we can always schedule another meeting. But um, let's just looking through my calendar here. What if we did like an end of August sort of end of summer check in? Does that sound good? Before before Labor Day, you're thinking? Yeah, I think so. Unless anyone feels strongly otherwise. That's fine. Pick a date. All right. If if we could do not the first or third week of the month uh just because it always seems to land right on the same week as concom that's just oh. my small preference all right so we meet first and third mondays um anyways just wanted to throw that out there what if we did um what's today tuesday do we usually meet on tuesdays what if we did tuesday august 27th let me look at my other calendar too I actually thought we used to meet on Wednesdays because it was the same night as planning, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, did we use switch at one point? Well, Tuesday the 27th or Wednesday the 28th of August. Does anyone have a preference? I don't have my calendar in front of me, but August is far uh, enough. Tuesday's, Tuesday's good, the 27th. Tuesday the 27th. Okay, okay. I'm say 6 p.m., and it'll probably be in person unless otherwise, but it'll be nice to check back in with everyone. 6 p.m. CPC, Tuesday, August 27th. And if we need any check-ins in between now and then, then I'll email you guys. And if right. anyone, any of you need something, need to talk about anything and need to pull together a meeting, just let me know and we'll make it happen. All right, two things. The only conflict I might have on Tuesday is if there's a select board meeting uh, that night, I sometimes get called into those. 
And Janet made me think of something that is coming up soon. Uh, Greenway, we're doing a walkthrough of the project on two, next Tuesday with the DOT. So that is uh, another step in that project moving forward. That's exciting. What time is that? Um, I believe it is at, uh, we're doing the Safe Routes to School, Norris School at 9.30, and I believe the Greenway will be 11. I don't know. I, I know I've got meetings for five hours that day, so it's going to be a <laughs> so that's, that's, be a slog. That's June the 11th at 11? I think so, yeah. Mm. Okay. Are you saying that Wednesdays are better for you? Because if we, we want, if nobody objects, we could do Wednesdays. Wednesdays might be slightly easier for me because I usually work from home on Wednesdays. Well, that might conflict with Mark because we usually, I don't know, maybe it's advantageous. We would have CONCOM, I mean, uh, C I was right. on many committees in my time in Southampton. Uh, um, CPC at, I think, 530. And then at 7, planning board would come in. So mm. if Mark wants to get all of his meetings out of the way at once, then we could do Wednesdays. <laughs> I, I'm pretty open. Otherwise, just I never yep. know when I'm going to have a conflict. Yeah, Let's I'm keep done. it Tuesday for now. Um, yeah, I think that's easy. I think that's it's a lot to have all of those. Also, um, they always want the second floor meeting room too. Um, and we usually meet at six. Uh, so I think let's keep it Tuesday for now. But then when we have, you know, if more people are in the room next time around and other people want to make it a Wednesday, we could do that. Yeah, I'm flexible either way. So yeah, I can well, do two meetings in one night, but. All right. Awesome. Um, all right. Any other? Oh, are we leaving it August the 27th at six o'clock in person? Yes. Okay. And uh, Randall, the uh, where, where would we meet for the Greenway meeting on the June oh, 11th? It's not, it's, not a, it's not a public meeting. It's um, oh. I'm meeting with Mass DOT with the design engineer. So just to do a, a site walk over. Can the Greenway committee members join in? Does, does Aaron know about it? Sure, Aaron does. I don't know. It's uh, we've already got like twelve people coming. I'm afraid of traffic problems. If like DOT, you got it, it's not going to be a fun meeting. It's the different divisions of Mass DOT are all going to come and argue amongst themselves about what we need to do and what we don't need to do. And I'm going to sit there and look pretty while the design engineer tries to absorb all of the things they say in order look to pretty. implement them into the plan. You said, try. you said look pretty. <laughs> so would Mark Cassis and Aaron Tauscher would not be included? I don't know if they were invited or not. The um, Mass DOT only invited several specific people. Huh. I hope well, I'm not offending anybody by leaving anybody out, but uh, it, it's... I think it's kind of important. It's a, bus there. it's a business meeting. Yeah, okay. Well, you got to look pretty then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you know, I bet would help is if you just email them all, let them know what's happening and that if they have any questions, they can tell you ahead of time and that you'll let them know if anything important happens afterwards. And then they'll be on the invite list. I, I wasn't in charge <laughs> of inviting, so um, I was just an invitee. So they may already be on the list. I'm not sure there was so many people on the distribution list that I, I didn't really examine it. Looks like the committee chairperson would be included, but. What do I know? Very well, maybe. I okay. just can't say for sure. All right. Sounds good. All right. Is there anything else we'd like to, to discuss before we adjourn? No, I'm good. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. Second? Yeah, who seconded second. it? Who? <laughs> Mark Darnold seconded it. Okay. All in favor of adjourning. We don't need to voice vote. Just aye. 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 This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.